Zero. What up, Bills Mafia? Special edition of the Smoke Break today. I know I usually have guests on, but none as big as this man. He rocks the best number in all of sports. Double 99, horrible Harry. Harrison Phillips is joining me on the Smoke Break. Let's bring him in. Harrison, thanks so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, no problem, no problem. And 99 is a pretty good number now, huh? 99, to me, is the best number in sports. Unless you can wear zero, you can't wear zero in the NFL, though. Yeah, or like an X, like longest yard style. Now that now you're talking. Get Goodell on the phone. If you can rock the X next year, you'll. I'll, I'll be the first person in line I, to buy the jersey. I, would, I wouldn't be worthy. I, pro, I, pro, I wouldn't be worthy. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you got the look for it. X up on the line, I wouldn't want to mess with you. Maybe, maybe just uh, some intimidation to help my game. I guess we'll start there. Talk to me the night. So you were 66 at Stanford. Yeah. You flip it. Is that yeah. why you went with 99 yeah. in Buffalo? Yep. Yeah. So in high school, you know, I was playing a little bit of offensive line, you know, t- like big tight end, whatever. And uh, for reasons I had to be an ineligible number. So that's, you know, 50 through 79, not very sexy numbers. Uh, so I, I went with 66. Uh, because there's 66 books in the Bible, and I wanted to at least have some reason to tie onto it. Um, and I got to Stanford, and it was still available, and kind of all the good 90. You know, we got 100 guys on the team pretty much, so most of the good numbers on defense in the 90s were already taken. Um, and so uh, uh, 66 again, and then got to the NFL, and they gave me you know about 12 numbers to choose from, and um, I chose 99. That was a you know flipped it upside down. Thought it worked out all right. That's perfect. You made the perfect choice. I've always felt 99. It's just, it, it's bigger than, than other numbers. It just looks bigger than other numbers. It, it just seems like it's bigger than life. Number 99. Yeah. It's not, so, it's not like it. Yeah. Uh, before we get into it, I got to bring this up to you. The other day I'm doing a live show and someone in the comments goes, Zbot, you look just like Harrison Phillips. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wow, Do I really look like a guy who's putting up 42 reps at 225 on the bench? It was the best compliment I've ever gotten in my life. Hey, no, that's good, man. I appreciate it. Uh, that's a good compliment for me, too, you know, because what, what do you weigh? Well, I, I'm like uh, 230, but it's so 95% like fat. I'm, it looks like I'm a, a nice 230. I'll take that, you know? Well, dude, 230, although you got about like a half foot on me, so that's the problem here. But I will say we have good taste in facial hair and haircut. We keep it short, keep the facial hair rocking. Yeah, well, the girlfriend hates the facial hair, but, you know, you got to put your foot down every once in a while, right? Pick your battles. I, I agree. My girlfriend, she, I think she pretends to like the facial hair. That's good. You got a good one then. <laughs> she, yeah, she'll pretend. And then there'll be hints where it's like, hey, are you, because you know how it gets. It gets all over the place. It's like, hey, are you going to clean it up anytime soon? And then it's like, all right, I'll take the hand. I'll go get it done, you know? Yeah, yeah. So stoked to have you on this week because I know that you finally got back out this week with your, uh, yeah. your playmaker charity organization during the pandemic. You weren't really able to hold the events with the kids like you usually do, but this past week you were back out there. How nice was it to be back out there with the kids doing what you love? It's, it's been great. You know, I've been in Buffalo, uh, a big chunk of the off season um, went back to Omaha uh, this week because I had a playmaker event here in Omaha as well. And so, um, yeah, you know, with COVID protocols last year, you know, even, even now we still had a bunch of hoops to jump through with, you know, we had X amount of people, but we could only have them in certain amount of groups and they couldn't ever overlap and you masked and social distance activity and wiping down balls in between each thing and arts and crafts and tables. And so it made it a little more, uh, a little harder, but it was still a great event. And, um, yeah, you guys know now up in Western New York now, that's, that's a big part of who I am. You know, it's not just something for, for show or for the recognition or whatever. I mean, it's a true passion of mine. And so, um, not being able to do that was, was tough this year. So I'm um, really thankful. I got to go out and see some of those uh, smiling faces again. And then, uh, came right back to Omaha and did the same event, um, two nights ago here at my church here. So, um, starting to, you know, get out there in the communities. And obviously I got my big fum- summer football camp that I'm hoping that we're going to be able to have 
the 300 plus people I want to be there. We don't know with, with the COVID restrictions, but um, it was just nice to see those kids. All the work doesn't go unnoticed. That is for sure. And obviously this year you were the Bills nominee for the Walter Payton man of the year. And I, I think that's one of the highest honors in all of sports to even be mentioned uh, towards winning that award. How much did it mean to you to represent Buffalo and the team in pursuit of such a prestigious award like that? Well, it, it was a huge honor. I mean, I didn't even realize how prestigious of an award or a recognition it was until I kind of received it and started seeing all the great things that come with it. Um, you know, part of the, part of the reason I never really anticipated that I would win that. Now I followed that and understood what that award was, but in the past, it's always kind of been someone who could steal a headline. It's always been someone who could $50,000 donation, $500,000 donation, or, you know, paid for a whole blank blank team to go you know like a big headline thing and from what i've seen that's oftentimes what um you know team nominees do is they a huge before school or you know before the year starts they do a big backpack driving with ten thousand kids getting school supplies you know something really really big and i think mine is you know a lot of more quality and uh you know i do year-round activities and so like i think in 2019 I was at Oshai Children's Hospital 20 times. I mean, that's almost every other week, wow. um, you know, throughout the whole year. And working with my kids, we had 11 events. That's almost one every month. I was doing a Playmaker event with 50 to 75 plus kids at every event. Um, and so I think my teammates just saw that, you know, the daily active, I'm in the, in the locker room making phone calls to Dave and Busters to try to organize to get, you know, how, how much do I have to pay to get it rented out for the kids? And then I'm, the next day I'm on a Zoom with a classroom of kids with developmental differences and special needs. And I think my teammates just saw me, um, you know, constantly doing small things all throughout the year. So just like one big headline thing. I think they respected that. Um, and so it meant a lot to be re recognized in our locker room where we have a lot of guys who have their own foundations and do a lot of big things. Um, but uh, I really did appreciate that my teammates uh, see the work that I'm doing and see how much uh, how important it is to me. It really seems, though, like the recognition is far from what you're looking for. It's all about, you know, you wanting to give your time to these kids. What is it about you that makes you want to donate as much time as you just laid out? Because that that's a lot of time that you give up to spend with these kids and make a difference in their life. Uh, it would be really hard to pinpoint it. It's just kind of a desire and a passion that I have. Um, I mean, I could probably trace it back to just being grateful for the village that raised me and, you know, I was a little kid, I would obsess and get the um, newspaper printouts and cut out the high school athletes, right? A kid who was all state or a kid that had a two sack game, made the newspaper, and I thought he was a superstar. And that was just a small school Nebraska kid who's probably five foot 10, 180 pounds, and he's a defensive tackle. Uh, but I just, you know, I, I would do, do anything. I'd go to the games and try to get autographs and that whole thing. Just little high school kids that never played in college, never went on the NFL. So I just couldn't imagine what my younger self would have done if somebody was a Division One athlete or was an NFL football player and came back and was trying to help out or trying to get involved. I think it really would have like been a one of the you know biggest days of my life. To be honest, I met Danny Woodhead one time when I was younger, and I mean I, I have a picture and I had to sign some stuff and. That was like, I always remember the day that I met Danny Woodhead. And so, um, you know, if, I, if I've got a microphone in front of me or if I'm talking to a group of kids, they're going to listen a little bit better than their teacher or their other coach. And so um, if I can instill in them better character, better sportsmanship, um, the, the passions to give back and to try to play their part in this communities and their communities, um, then I feel like I can do, you know, do some justice there. You know, the way you go about everything, it seems to embody the city of Buffalo. It just seems like that is what Buffalo is. They embrace so much of the community. I mean, they really do their part in every way. Bill's Mafia, especially. I think out of all the things this year, I mean, you guys had an historic season. But the one thing that really stood out among everything was the donations made by Bill's Mafia um, for Josh Allen's grandmother at Oshai Hospital, over a million dollars. You donate all this time, Crazy. and you you're such a charitable person yourself. How does it feel to play for a team whose fan base does similar things and and raises money 
in that capacity. Yeah. It, I mean, th th those type of things really like it, it's hard to explain because you guys know, I mean, Buffalo, Western New York, we're not the most rich upper middle class area. You know, I mean, we, we have people who, um, you know, they're, they're budgeting every week, but they found money to go donate for, you know, to the hospital in Josh's grandmother's honor. And so that, that means a lot. And um, everywhere I've gone in the community and all the places I've been uh, in Western New York, you know, it's so empowering to see other people who aren't NFL football players, but they're still doing their own giving back. Right? I have hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people begging to volunteer. They don't want to get paid. They don't want a picture. They don't want to autograph. They want to work with the kids that I work with because it looks so fun. And that um, that's just a passion of theirs. Um, I was so happy for uh, Oshad because, you know, that's that's near and dear to my heart as well. I did right. a lot of work with them when that donation went through. And then the one that really got me was how about Lamar Jackson? When Unreal. Lamar Jackson got you know knocked out. I think they raised like four hundred grand or three hundred yeah. grand, and I was I was so impressed with our fan base. And then you know this is I shouldn't even share this, but a little bit of my pride, my pride and ego said, "Hey guys, I got a foundation too now. I mean, I, I play for the Bills. You play for Baltimore. You could you could get some of that to mine if you want." Uh, but no, that that's really cool, and it's a testament to our our fan base and all of Western New York how caring and genuine and salt of the earth people that we have in Western New York. Yeah. I, I, it, it, the one thing to me, it was, it was, we've been waiting for a season like you guys had for so long. And it just felt like as, as a fan base, it was the least that any of us could do, you know, give back to what you guys brought us during such an awful year. I mean, we are all in the stands week in and week out. We weren't able to do that this year, but each and every week, man, you guys, were our distraction. You guys were our entertainment and the, the real light at the end of the tunnel. Football season this year was more special than ever. You know, how did it feel for you throughout the year not having the fans in the stands, especially on defense where I feel like it's it's almost more important having that factor on your side? Yeah. Well, you know, you got to see it a taste of and, and what you you mentioned too like all right, when we're winning, not to say the fans um, you know, kind of sway. Cause we've, I remember my first year here, we had a losing season. Like if it's a close game, fans are in it regardless. And so, but you got to see a little bit more this year. Like if we were a winning team and these are bigger games, the fans have been going nuts. And when we yeah. played Baltimore and we had what, 10,000 people in there, they had back to back to back fall, uh, fall start, delay a game, fall start backed up in their end zone. Um, because of the fans and that yeah. was with 10,000 people. And so that's just like a small catalyst to show what really could have happened for us this year. And it really would have helped us out on defense. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to line up on defense and us have to say our call. You got some of the smartest offensive minded quarterbacks in the, in the world that can sometimes hear what we're saying. And then he can check out and everyone on the offense can hear what he's saying. And everyone's on the same page. Cause you know, he, he can call out his audibles and everybody can hear it. Um, that really puts the defense at a disadvantage. And you know, I think that's why you saw a few more higher uh, scoring games for us this year um, is we didn't have you guys at home to help us out. You know, it's kind of ironic. You bring that up. That was the game I wanted to highlight. That was by far your guys best defensive performance of the year. You shut down Baltimore in a way that no other team did all year. You held them to three points. Lamar Jackson's one of the most versatile quarterbacks in the league. You held him completely in check. Their running game was next to none in the league this year. You completely shut it down. What was it about that game plan that you guys were able to execute it the way you did? Because it just seemed like you would figure something out against the Ravens that nobody else had been able to do for the last couple of years. Yeah, you know, it's hard. And, and I agree with you. We, we had a great, uh, great performance. And, all, you know, that was actually one of my best games of the season as well. And um, I don't know, things were just kind of clicking. I think we realized how close we were. I think what week before was Indy, and we, none of us really liked how that game went, right? We yes. should have beat them by a, a more substantial amount. So all of us realized, like, you know, the year before we thought we had a real solid team and we lost that first round of the playoffs. And then, you know, this year we thought, we, you know, we had a great, even better team, and we had that scare, you know, first round of the playoffs, and we're sitting there, holy cow, guys, like, you know, we have a team that can make the stretch the whole way. We got to buckle up. So that week was a real serious week. Guys were staying a little late. Guys were – you know, really conscious and, and to be Baltimore, really, like you said, you got to make them one dimensional. Don't let them run. Don't let them get the run game going. And it's hard for them to sit back there 
And, you know, because they got those bigger body tight ends and stuff, it takes time for them to get out on their routes and things right. like that. So um, if you make them one dimensional, it's, it's fairly easy. And so our linebackers did a great job coming downhill early um, and uh, everybody kind of being on board, recognizing personnel groups and things like that. So um, that was a, that was a good one for us. It sure seemed like Leslie Frazier was ready for that game. And then, of course, the better you guys got, the more there were talks about him potentially leaving for a head coaching job. It's unbelievable what's going on in the front office, bringing everybody back, Frazier included, you being on the DN, uh, the defensive side of the ball. How important is it for you to know going back, going into next season, you have Frazier still there as your coach? Yeah, it's it's awesome. And more than anything, it just is a little stability because let's say Frazier took another job. Is he taking any of our other guys with him? Right. right. Is, is, is now maybe Eric Washington, a D coordinator somewhere. Now I got a new D line coach or is Bobby Babbage. Some, you know, we got a bunch of different people that could possibly be moving around and not to say that that's a huge disadvantage or a huge handicap, but um, you know, all of my technique is the exact same this year as last year. When you get new people in, you know, maybe you shade a little bit more this way. Maybe your step is six inches versus a foot. Maybe you go through your hands or your hip, you know, guys have different, um, different ways to coach and because I'm still technically a young player in the league I would have to adapt to those coaching styles you know once you're a, a, a veteran who's been to a couple pro bowls or done your thing you can kind of get away with okay just keep being you but as, as a young player myself still developing still haven't hit my ceiling in the league um, I'd have to you know change up my game a little bit to match whoever um, what was in the in the room coaching so a little more stability then that we can get out and and uh, build upon what we did last year uh, we as fans were almost gearing up to get ready to say bye to Matt Milano. I mean, we really thought that he might be gone and cornerstone of the Bills D. When we found out he was coming back, it was huge news for us as fans. He's one of the biggest parts of your unit. How did you feel when the news broke that you knew Matt was coming back? <laughs> I was in the weight room at, at Buffalo. It was like, I don't know, five o'clock at night or something. It was kind of an evening and there was nobody else in there. It might have been later than that, actually. Um, but I was like going to switch the music on my phone and I saw a couple alerts on my phone. And so I, I clicked on social media or whatever and saw that we extended him. And I called the first thing I did click FaceTime. I mean, he's probably on the phone <laughs> doing a bunch of stuff. I tried FaceTime him. He didn't answer. And so I just went to a message. I clicked the video and I'm working out. So, you know, you got all the testosterone going and sweat. Yeah. And I just took a video like, I'm in the, let's go. <laughs> I was, you know, cussing up a storm. Yeah. I was hyped. I was like, get back to Buffalo, come train with me, dog. Because uh, Matt and I are kind of weight room guys, so we like to stay after in OTAs or stay after in lifts and get some extra core work in together or a little gun show or whatever it may be. Um, so I was super, super excited for him. Um, he did it the right way. Uh, one of the most humble players. Uh, guy, uh, it, It's incredible. I'm so, so happy for him. Um, and, you know, the financial stability and all that stuff that comes with his contract and um, very well deserved. I'm happy for him. Without a doubt. It just seems like he is so underrated. If you're not a Bills fan, I don't know many people on the street who know Matt Milano, yet he is far and away one of the best linebackers in the league, more than deserving of staying. But he basically foregoed free agency. And you got guys like Mitch Morris taking a pay cut, Micah Hyde coming out and vocalizing how much it means to play in Buffalo. I preach this on my show time and time again, because it's one thing to be a fan. It's another thing to be a fan of this team. It just feels different than anything else in all of sports. And it doesn't only feel like that from the fan base. It just seems to completely pour out of you guys as the team itself. Do you guys feel that every day when you walk in, do you feel that your culture is just a tier above everybody else's? Uh, you mean in the building or in, in Western New York? Just j the building, the the culture that surrounds the city itself. Does it just feel different than anything else you see around the league? Does it just feel as though your culture is something that yeah. is just unarguably one of the best in sports? Yeah, you know, well, I'd say in our building, definitely. And I haven't been anywhere else. Hopefully I don't ever go anywhere else. Right. But um, from what I've heard from other guys, you know, like the – an old salty vet might say we are a little more like coaches and administration, more hands on. Um, but because our team was so young when coach got here and we're, you know, had a lot of young players and stuff, you know, almost like a college feel where they're in, in with us all the time, heavy coaching, very serious kind of, you know, military type style thing, because you bring in people who care, you don't bring in people with big egos and big 
personalities that they they're here to work and they want to be the best. And so we have a lot of guys that, um, you know, we, we come to work, we work, you know, it's not a lot of fun time. It's not a lot of play time. We're not going to the movies every other week in training camp. We're not getting off the field early, an hour early because we had a good practice. No, if we got two hours on the practice field, we're there for two hours, 120 minutes to the dot. And if we, you know, if we're have a workout, whatever, if we're in the building for four hours, we're going to be that whole four hours. We're not getting cut out early. We're not doing that stuff, but the guys enjoy that. They want to be, you know, you know, we want to work, be the hardest working team in the league. Um, and then from a culture wise outside of it, you know, I, I've heard some other players say that like green Bay is, I guess something that they kind yeah. of compare to it. Um, you know, where you just kind of like got a, a smaller town and that's like their thing. Uh, but since I haven't really been anywhere else, I, it'd be hard for me to imagine you know, I, I, growing up in Nebraska, you know, there's like Nebraska fans. That's probably the closest feel I'd have is like it's Nebraska fans everywhere. Everywhere you go, it's Nebraska shirt, Nebraska shirt, Cornhusker license plate. And when you drive around Western New York, that's the same thing you see with Bills. So it's awesome. When I meant compared to everybody else, it wasn't that you had been somewhere else. It was just that I don't see any other players on any other team orchestrating their own life around their organization like yeah. you guys do. Like just the other day bringing Isaiah McKenzie back, which I'm super stoked about. He said he'd play for candy bars. If that's what Brandon Bean offered him, you just don't see that. That's kind of what I'm getting at here. If I were, if I were Bean, I think I'd restructure the contract then. Oh, is that right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Tell him, Hey, you want candy bars? We'll give you candy bars. Save some money. Listen, Isaiah, we got a king size Hershey's and a 10 piece of uh, Reese's cups. We'd love to have you back next. Yeah. What do you think you said? Sign me up. Where do I sign? No, yeah, but it, it, it just seems, interesting. and I, I agree with it 100%. And, um, you know, it's an interesting line you have to walk because, you know, let's say you're super adamant and, and vocal about it. And, you know, maybe they try to get hometown discounts on guys. Maybe they don't. Maybe, you know, I think I've, I've even heard some, some players, not only with us, but a couple other places, taking like pay cuts or a lesser amount to stay with that team. Yeah. And that, that just goes to show if people talk about how much they love Buffalo, it's our team. You know, the, the individuals in your own room, you know, our coaches, uh, the, the, a lot of people have fantastic, great relationship with the coaches. Um, and then you guys, you know, our fans, it makes it really, really hard to uh, to imagine yourself somewhere else. Let's go back to that Baltimore game, because the play of the year, I mean, one of the biggest plays in franchise history. To Ron Johnson's pick six. And I love the video of it because you correct me if I'm wrong, but you were on the sideline for the play. Uh, when it started. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yes, what it, that's what I was just yeah. going to say. The end of the clip, when the whole team's making their way to the video board, you're leading the back of it with your hands all the way up in the air. Yeah. Walk me through just that whole moment. I'm sure you probably blacked out for half of it, but I ran around my house like a chicken with my head cut off. I can't imagine what it was like for you guys on the sideline. So, so relive it with me. What well, was it like? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I obviously crucial part of the game down in our red zone. If they score, now it's a little bit of a different game. Now that you know that type of thing, because um, you know that's a that's a fourteen point swing what Taron did, and then when Taron got the interception, a super pump because Taron also is kind of on my and, and the way I see things, kind of like a Matt Milano, kind of working behind the scenes, humble, quiet, just doing his thing, um, and I really I respect that about guys. So he got the interception. I was sitting on the bench, you know, kind of looking through the plays or, or sorry, next to next to uh, my position coach, uh, trying to get through some plays to see if I was going to go back in, in in the red zone. He got the pick. I remember through the through the tablet. That was the first thing. And then as he's running, I mean, we were I'm glad I wasn't mic'd up because no one should hear uh, hear me swear that much for the type for Buffalo's man of the year. It probably didn't sound like Buffalo's man of the year. Um, and as he was taking off, running down the sideline, everyone's going nuts. I start taking off sprinting. And then somewhere, you know, maybe 10, 15 yards of like a full sprint, I realized, holy cow, after we score, we got to go back on defense. I'm going to be up. So I kind of slowed down a little bit. Guys started running past me. I just kind of put the hands up and ran down there and celebrated with them. And then ran to the sideline and got my win because I knew we were about to go back out and they were going to rotate us so I'd be back in the game. Um, but, yeah, that was that was a huge statement. Um, really excited that Taryn was able to do that. And, uh, yeah, I think – If you go show the top 10 plays in Bill's history, that one's going to be on there forever. And I think one of the cooler parts about it, and I'm sure this was awesome for you guys, play of the year, and it was one of two games in which 
there were fans in Bill Stadium. Yeah, How yeah. cool was it to have that as a part of it? Yeah, yeah, that that you get, yeah, so all the juice from from the fans flowing in, and even though there was ten thousand, it definitely sounded a lot louder than that when he was taking that thing back. Let's talk about you personally for a second. So uh, you you've been through a lot. I mean, you had the ACL tear in college, then you had to get surgery on both knees. Uh, uh, season four, you cut short in twenty nineteen. But last year, you you, you were you were back. You had full availability in twenty twenty. What did it mean for you to just be back? at full availability, full and healthy for a, for a full season. You, you, you missed out on the playoff game uh, the year prior, but you came back with a full slate. What did it mean to be a full part of this team? Well, definitely, I mean, way, way better than be, being hurt, obviously. <laughs> uh, but this year was different, difficult for many reasons. And, you know, yeah, you're back, but not necessarily myself. And so it's super frustrating to go out there and be playing and wanting to be good and trying, you know, but your body not be a hundred percent. And, you know, I know I'm not old, but you're older. So it was a little different than my first time around. And then having surgery on both knees, um, you know, makes uh, a nine month rehab a little bit longer because you're rehabbing both legs. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was hard. And, um, I didn't have any time off. And so, you know, had surgery in the middle of the season or whatever, and then rehab, 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 Christmas came, rehab, January, Super Bowl, rehab in Buffalo, year round, March, April, building shut down, went home for a little bit, came back as soon as they let me come back, rehab and rehab in summer, no vacations, no 4th of July parties, rehabbing, grinding, go straight to training camp. You know, we came back early for training camp. So all the training camp stuff, all the, then we went right into the season. And so midway, you know, the first couple of weeks I had just been almost burned out. I've, yeah. I've gone like a full year without a, an off season because I was rehabbing and had that mentality. So um, the coaches, you know, they gave me some time off there a couple of weeks in the middle of the season and um, got my health a little bit better. And then when I came back in, you know, I played against the Patriots, played real well, had another week off and then the bye week. And then when we came back um, those last like seven or eight games of the season, I thought I was playing a lot closer to my true self. Um, you know, even though it, it's hard in offense for some reason, we just haven't had the crazy stats at a defensive lineman. You know, we aren't getting a lot of 10 sack guys or 60 tackle guys just because, you know, our line, the way our linebackers play and kind of how our defense is set up. Mm -hmm. So even though it wasn't necessarily statistically um, just being in close and stuff, you know, helping split double teams and seeing guys come downhill right off of my tail, knowing that like, oh, that's a big factor for me. Um, getting close to the quarterback, you know, hits, hurries, stuff like that. Um, and then, yeah, down the stretch, I think I saw something that was like, you know, in the last five games of the year or something, I had like 20 tackles or something, some, you know, a pretty, a pretty solid stat that was like yeah. as, as down the stretch as I kind of became more healthy and felt more comfortable in my body. I started playing that football that feels a little bit more like myself. And so, um, the Baltimore game was probably one of my best games against the run. And then, you know, obviously the Chiefs game, I don't even like talking about it, but yeah. uh, I, I, I rushed pretty well for me. You know, I was beating my guy, at least. And obviously Mahomes is a magician back there getting the ball out before you can get there. But, you know, I, I got a couple hits on him, a couple of hurries. And so um, it was good to kind of put those two last games on film at the end of the season uh, to build my confidence uh, for the offseason and what next year can look like. How are you feeling now? Well, you know, uh, still got some some bumps and bruises and some things that I'm working out. Um, you know, part of part of my own, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy because I train really, really hard doing two a days and things like that. So um, I've, I got a good plan with the the team up in Buffalo when I was there. You know, when I'm when I'm in Buffalo, they have their eyes on me and can monitor. Hey, nope, you're not doing an extra five sets. You're not doing an extra ten reps. Um, so things should be good, and um, you know. We'll have to find out if we're coming back to OTAs or not, uh, if it's going to be virtual again. Yeah. But, um, yeah, all's well. What's the personal goal for you next year? I mean, obviously it was great that you were able to come back and play last year after having to deal with both surgeries. Now that you have an off season, what's your personal goal heading into 21? Um, I, I just want, like, when I line up uh, first day of training camp, I just want to feel myself. I, I just want to feel healthy. I want to feel confident. Um you know, I hope I can take my knee braces off this year. Those are uh, a big handicap in my game. You know, they're big, clunky, tight on, on your body. Take some of your athleticism away. So I just want to be healthy um, so that I can go out there and, and, you know, play the way that I want to play and put my, my body on the line for the team. 
And, you know, obviously, you know, you kind of got to get one stepping stone at a time, but obviously, you know, make the team be a, a major contributor uh, on our defensive line. Obviously we rotate, but so if I can, you know, try to hover around that 45, 40% of the snaps, like all of our kind of D tackles do uh, be a three down player in our system, which towards the end of the season, I, I was getting in on some third downs and do, doing all right, doing it. So, um, you know, those are, those are some of the goals for me. Uh, obviously it's a contract year. So I want to, prove to the bills that I'm worthy of an extension yep. and um, you know, can, can be a pillar with these other guys that they've re-signed, you know, the, the Tredavious is the Dion, the Milano's they're the guys that they've drafted in here um, show them that I can, you know, be a part of the future here too. I know you don't want to talk about the chiefs game. I really don't either, but a month and a half or so removed now, what do you think you, you guys are so close? You're so close. Was there a lesson learned from that game in particular was there a lesson learned from making it to the AFC championship that's going to help you get to that next level next season? Definitely. And I, I sure wish that we got to play the Chiefs that played in the Super Bowl. I feel like there were two different teams than what we saw versus what Tampa saw. No doubt. But, um, yeah, you know, our goals this last year were to win the AFC East and to win at home. And we, we really did that for the most part. Um we're going to have loftier goals this year, you know, probably win the AFC, get ourselves uh, into the Super Bowl. So, um, now that we've been there, you know, we return all of our guys for the most part. And so everyone has been in an AFC championship game. Everyone's played in that type of moment and understand that it's a, you know, once the playoff comes, it's a whole different ball game. It and I didn't understand that. I didn't play in the playoffs before last year. Right. And so everyone's like, oh, the playoffs is different. The playoff is different. And it, it truly is. Guys are going 100 percent every single play. They'll put their body on the line. They'll hurt themselves if they have to to make the, the play. So. Um, now we have guys, younger guys, rookies, and, and myself, other players who've now played in those big time games and know what it takes. And um, we'll make the adjustments that we needed, um, you know, player wise as well as coaching. The guy coaches have now coached in the AFC Championship game and know that you know you got to be willing to adapt and do some things. So we're really excited to prove ourselves and earn our way back into that game. You know, as a fan, the ultimate goal is the same as your as yours guys is. It's win the Super Bowl this close. And at the end of the day, there's only one team that does it. Have you guys been able to reflect, though, after a couple months removed here and, and really realize what you accomplished? Because it was one of the best seasons the franchise has had in well over two decades. Does, does that resonate at all with you guys knowing that you accomplished more than many, many teams prior have even come close to accomplishing? Uh, you know, it's hard. I haven't been able to, you know, the guys that I've messaged and stuff like um, after the season, because, you know, that day after we lost, no one's thinking about, hey, good job, guys. We did. We right. were close enough. And now that we've been gone for a while, some of the, you know, the D-line chats and some of my buddies that I'll FaceTime, you know, Josh and Milano, Tremaine, some of the guys that I keep up with uh, on the regular, you know, kind of do that and say, wow, now that we're removed and we got to see the fans and stuff, we really did accomplish something tremendous. And, um I would still say that most people have that humble and hungry mindset. I, I don't think anyone is satisfied or complacent by any means. Maybe just a nice reminder, hey, this is what we can do. Let's build on it. So it's awesome. Well, man, we are really pumped to get back into the stands and watch it. We're hitting the half hour mark. I know you got to run. Yeah. Wanted to thank you so much for hopping on and taking the time. Before I let you go, though, have to ask, I ask everybody, Where's the wing spot for you in Buffalo? You got to get some wings where you're going. But you, you know I don't even got to answer that, right? Well, let's you hear know, it. You know what I'm going to say. It's, Give it to it's, me. It's Barbells. Come on now. It's Barbell, bar 100%. You want it? It's the blue cheese at Barbell. What is it yeah. about that blue cheese? Don't know, but you gave me some Cajun honey butter barbecue. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do we got? What is this? Cajun honey butter barbecue. It's the best. Oh, best, best you just did something, man. Now I'm now 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 I'm gonna have to. What made you go with those? I never even heard of them. I think I think Kyle Williams maybe when I first got here. Like, hey, what's the wing spot? He told me the spot said order Cajun honey butter barbecue or just honey butter barbecue. So I got I think I got probably twenty of each. <laughs> now I don't know. Like I got a, a significant amount of each, and that Cajun honey butter barbecue seemed to be the favorite. So. You know, in a year that we we're allowed to hang out, we're doing like D-line dinners at Jerry Hughes's house or whatever. We nice. get hundreds and hundreds of Cajun honey butter bar barbecue wings, get the blue cheese going, and uh, guys are pretty happy. 
I was going to ask you that, but I figured it was a dumb question because there was an, I just there was no way in my mind that I didn't think you guys all got together and just hammered wings every now and then. There was no uh, way I thought you would. It, it, obviously, we weren't allowed to this year. Right. But in, in, a, in a COVID-free year, uh, literally every Monday night, I'm at Josh's for Monday night game. And every Thursday night, I'm at Jerry's for Thursday night game, like every week. And yeah. hammering wings or pizza or something good. So Love it. Well, I'm going to go hop in the car, grab some of those wings. I'm going to let you roll. Harrison, yeah, really appreciate the time, man. Keep up all the awesome work in the offseason, and we can't wait to get in the stands and watch in 21. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, guys. All right, Thanks. talk to you, man. Take care. Bye-bye. Harrison Phillips, man. What a guy. I mean, you want to talk about somebody who embodies who the Buffalo Bills are, who Buffalo is. I, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award is a prestigious honor. To even be considered for it is Remarkable. And that guy, I mean, you, you you heard him in the beginning of the interview. The amount of time he gives to these kids is, is remarkable. Uh, you know, we, we, we often think that these athletes are, you know, larger than life and, and they're not human. He, he brings it down to a human level and realizes the impact he can have on the community, on kids, and he takes full advantage. It's an, uh, it's an incredible thing to see. It's an awesome, awesome dude. Harrison Phillips, he's been through a lot, multiple injuries, uh, back to a uh, full availability last season. And I always root for a guy like that, man. Harrison Phillips, stand up, dude. This was a lot of fun, everybody. I really appreciate you tuning into the smoke break. Buffalo Fanatics keeps churning out these player interviews. I hope you guys are enjoying them. During the offseason here, just when you think there's no football content rolling through, we're bringing the players right to you. We're having a blast talking to them, and we, uh, we hope you're enjoying what they're bringing to the table. It's so great to, to hear some of these things. Like I had no idea that he wore 66 in college because of the amount of Bible verses in the Bible. Who the hell knew that there was honey Cajun butter wings? Maybe everybody knows. I don't. They sound absolutely phenomenal. I mean, now that's all I can think about is like, like honey Cajun barbecue wing or whatever the hell he said. Usually I'm just a standard Buffalo wing guy. Like I'm just tried and true hot wing. Five things of blue cheese just hammering them. I never, I never tend to go with the, like the funky stuff. But every time I, I, I hear about one or two of them, there's always somebody who's loyal to it, and they always say how great it is. I'm taking his word for it, no doubt about it. The D line boys, there's no way they don't know. What, there's no way that they don't know what they're talking about. Like they know wings, and if Kyle Williams is recommending them, that that's that's a high regard. I would assume. Kyle Williams was in Buffalo for a hundred years. I guarantee you, he knows what wings are good and what wings aren't. All right, we'll wrap it up. Head, uh, headed towards the 40 minute mark interview with Harrison Phillips. Awesome on the field, even more awesome in person. Great guy gives a ton of time to charity and it was a, a real honor to uh, sit down and have a chat with him. Look forward to seeing you on the next one for now. Stay safe, take care. And as always go bills.